Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Knowledge 16, brought to you by ServiceNow. Here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Jeff Frick. We're back. This is Knowledge 16. This is theCUBE. We go out to the events. We extract the signal from the noise. Matthias Egelhoff is here. He's the program director at Siemens AG, a worldwide conglomerate. Matthias, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you for inviting me. Star of the keynote this morning. We had that little <laughs> snippet. And, uh, but again, you know, welcome. Tell us what you uh, do at Siemens. Exactly, so let me start. Uh, I joined Siemens uh, in the crazy e-business world in 2000. But the journey I'm on currently is uh, started in 2002 when we had the uh, easy question of how many uh, money is spending Siemens on IT. And this is uh, an easy question, but out in those days uh, it was not easy to answer. So we created a lot of transparency. What is Siemens spending in IT? And we keep on uh, driving that transparency. Based on the transparency, we initiated uh, different measure. One was uh, that we are focusing on service management in the infrastructure area. For example, in application, we did a lot of uh, consolidation. And uh, then we did several steps in the uh, optimization uh, based on the transparency we made. We made uh, some outsourcing deals. Uh, we uh, did a global IT organization and we managed our providers uh, now since 12 years in service management. But we thought, what is the next step? What is the big shot that is uh, coming ahead of us? And then we thought this is uh, about service integration, getting rid of the silos like network, application, data center, voice, and uh, having really an integration layer about the different topics, as well as um, ensuring that we have end-to-end -end responsibility from uh, the customer side. And that was the challenge of answering that question. It was just so many stovepipes and so many systems and so many different systems of record. And, and <laughs> is ServiceNow that integration layer? Is that, exactly. is that right? Exactly. So uh, ServiceNow is our single service uh, integration platform. And uh, it spans the world from the demand to the supply side. Demand, of course, our Siemens internal uh, employees. Um, they were confronted in the old days with uh, several portals. My uh, favorite example is always uh, ordering an iPhone in Siemens was quite a difficult task. Uh, you had to order in one portal the hardware, in the other one the SIM card, and in the third the messaging service. Yeah? Now we have the one-stop shop portal called My IT in Siemens, and uh, there we have a bundle where the customer has not to know which portal, which provider, we have our portal and the user can co just concentrate what he needs. And in that portal, he can order and manage his IT and products as well as uh, place incidents. So that's the demand side. And then for the uh, IT uh, organization, as you said, we had uh, a zoo of uh, products and tools and processes. And uh, now with uh, service management, we have uh, implemented a typical incident problem change service request. Uh, config, uh, demand, contract management, so all the nice uh, IT service management processes and rolled that out on a global scale. So we have now one process, one organization able to get the full transparency and the knowledge where is uh, the status of IT and what is the health status. Eh? So leading up to 2000, Y2K was spend, 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 and then after Y2K it was a cut, 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 cut. So now, fast forward, you've got visibility on the spend, transparency. Um, what's the climate like? Uh, Frank showed a chart today, cost you know, coming down, but people are investing in IT because it's such an important part of the business. Are you able now to have much better line of sight on how those investments are producing for the business, and has that affected your strategy? Totally, and uh, of course, to a certain degree, we have to go that path. Um, but we were able to cut the cost dramatically because uh, we could shut down uh, existing tool sets. We could um, uh, be faster in deploying new uh, services. So before we had uh, ServiceNow, we had basically 15 tool sets that we had to enable to roll out a global service yeah, to Europe, North America, LATAM, and uh, Asia, 15 tool sets. Now we have one. 
That is, of course, dramatically faster in the deployment time, uh, in the time to customer, in just enabling one tool set in, instead of uh, 15. And you retired those other tool sets? Or Absolutely. And, and, and people were screaming and kicking, or was it okay? Absolutely. Um, they were all <laughs> complaining about the, the uh, tools, but as soon as you tell them, hey, we are going shut down those tools, they said, hey, that's the best tool we ever <laughs> had. Huh? And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Don't take my tool, I'll take my tool. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But um, uh, convincing them is uh, quite easy with the ServiceNow product because uh, it is, from a usability standpoint, uh, modern, integrated, so you, you catch them, can catch them easily that they really can shut down uh, the tools. We even hel helped our uh, providers also to shut down uh, tools because uh, they have basically the same environment. They have not one CMDB, one tool set. They also have a fragmented uh, environment. And uh, that's why we told all our providers in saying you can either work directly in our tool or you have to con be connected to our tool. But it's no longer uh, that you have your own ecosystem. So we have really generated an ecosystem from the employee that can order something in the My IT portal. Then it's going through our IT service management processes directly to our providers, fully automated. And uh, that's where the uh, providers also had to buy in, in saying, yeah, we also see the benefits of uh, consolidating our tool landscape, of getting better quality in our CMDB. Um, that, that is the win-win situation. What they don't like uh, currently is that we have a much more transparency on how they perform. Yeah, we don't have to wait until month's end, until we get a nice paper of green, amber, something. Uh, we have now in our system real-time data anytime. Yeah, we can really much more efficiently manage our provider, can really dig into all the details uh, that are available in our tool set. And that's, of course, a big advantage. But unfortunately, the provider has to get used to that, uh, that the customer is telling them how they provide. Yeah? It's a little bit a game changer. And was that, did you tie it back to SLAs, or it's just new knowledge, new information that you just didn't have before to help you manage that relationship? No, I mean, uh, of course, SLAs are an important uh, topic, but uh, SLA on a monthly basis speak one language, but uh, the experience on a daily basis tells another story. So uh, when we got the, the SLAs on a month's end, you always get an average OK level, but if you then dig down into this SLA in that country for this customer, you saw some uh, issues, but that is now available in our ServiceNow instance. And this is, of course, a, a great opportunity for us to manage the, the results of the providers. And, of course, also, as we have now our own tool set, our own service integration architecture, we can plug in and out more easily the providers. They don't like that as well, <laughs> but uh, that is the uh, advantage because I don't see... Uh, and that is uh, also a market trend that we get away from the 10 years, 15 year out co uh, outsourcing contracts. This will be duration times of one year, two year, uh, more cloud based. Yeah? And uh, to be really uh, that or to support that velocity and speed that we can integrate much more easily the providers we have to have our own uh, framework, we have to have our own interfaces to the providers to really ensure we can plug in and out very easily. One of the uh, new acronyms that we are hearing at, at Knowledge this year is, is SIAM, Service Integration and, and Management. Um, it's been described as sort of son of ITIL, ITIL 2.0. What, what is, from your perspective, Mateus, uh, serv uh, a SIAM? So for me, the big difference is, uh, I mean, we, we when we start with uh, ITIL, I think uh, ITIL was a great achievement in defining the processes, get a better maturity on incident problem and change and how this is done, and also to uh, generate the same uh, wording yeah, so that you get a better understanding between the providers and the customers. But uh, what we missed in ITIL is the integration. Mm. So uh, that we really, if there's an incident, 
and the, uh, we, we allocate this uh, incident to a provider and he doesn't feel responsible for it, then we can transfer this incident to the next provider and hopefully he's then uh, responsible and in charge. So uh, really the integration layer is for us very important uh, because the uh, market trend, the competition in the different silos like end user computing, data center application is pretty high. Uh, so the value add for the customer is for me really in the integration layer, getting the transparency across all your providers and of course the customers. Can you talk more about sort of how that has helped your, your business and your provider's business? Uh, for example, for the business, I mean, everybody talks about uh, cloud services and uh, all is fancy about cloud, but to really manage cloud services is not that easy. Because uh, what happened in, in, the, in the old days? Uh, the uh, Siemens employees managed their cloud services with the credit card. Meaning, if they wanted to have a server, they looked to Amazon or any other provider, gave in their credit card, and then this server was out of the IT. Yeah? Uh, but now with the platform, we have ensured that we can manage also the cloud services, not only the ordering is done via our My IT portal. We are getting also the reports, uh, not on a monthly basis, but really on daily basis, what is the usage of the cloud services. And then we can either upscale, downscale, or even decommission uh, those servers that are no longer needed. Because if they are managed via credit card, difficult to manage. <laughs> and that's why uh, it was uh, a key criteria for this uh, platform to also manage the cloud services. And, and do you have a module for people to spin up just little dev instances of Amazon? So you, you've actually brought shadow IT underneath the ServiceNow platform? Absolutely. <laughs> uh, and we have to expand that. So we are at the beginning of that journey, but uh, as cloud is picking up and uh, Siemens is also more addicted to cloud services, uh, we made sure that we have two examples of uh, providers that are really working with that platform and that we can manage the whole life cycle of a cloud service. So how so would you describe sort of your strategy with respect to ServiceNow? We're hearing a lot about, obviously, you know, start in, in IT service management. We're hearing a lot about other parts of the organization. Where are you guys in that whole journey? I mean, <clears throat> I could also start with uh, talking about the fancy stuff outside of IT. Yeah. But uh, I think two topics are really important. One is there are still a lot of IT service management processes within Siemens we have to shut down. Um, that means migration of existing tool sets is still a key activity for us because uh, then we can fully leverage our investment we made into uh, our ServiceNow platform in bringing in additional uh, tools. So this is uh, one key component that we have to follow. Uh, the second one is, as we have a high degree of automation, we really have to make sure that the system is mature. Yeah? For example, we are exchanging data with our own application, provider application, um, for incident problem and change 13 million data sets per month. That's quite a big number. And uh, if that data is not right, if we have mixed up data, the whole chain breaks, the whole automation doesn't work. So we spent also a lot of effort in um, hardening the system, spending a lot of time in uh, cleaning up the data that we are really sure we can also achieve the high degree of automation. Because it's always nice saying high degree of automation, digitalization, but getting there is an awful work. Uh, because this is painful, getting the right data, cleaning the data, and having the right data. And as you do one, then you just find your next point of failure, right? As you optimize the one, then you move. <laughs> it's a, it's exactly. a classic production line kind of a and, problem. Uh, and that's why I say migration, uh, maturing the, uh, the system is, is one key. Uh, then the third topic is, of course, we will bring in more providers, more services, uh, more um, uh, processes. Uh, we, we just uh, downloaded from the ServiceNow App Store uh, an application called MobiCord to manage our uh, telecom expense management uh, that we have also there more transparency uh, over the world. Uh, and then, of course, we are in discussions 
to uh, expand that platform also to facility management or HR. Uh, but this will take some time because uh, we still have uh, in the HR facility area, let's say, best of breed applications. And uh, there it's hard to compete against the uh, integration layer in saying, okay, but if it's integrated, we have all the incidents in and all the data. Um, so that balance is not there. But uh, I heavily believe that this will come as uh, ServiceNow is more maturing in the HR facility area and whatnot. And then I think the, the ratio looks different and it's uh, more promising also for Siemens to go beyond IT. So as you build out this integration architecture, I have to ask you about <coughs> security. Um, and my question is not one of a technical nature, it's one of sort of a philosophical nature. How is the conversation shifting, right? It's for decades we've spent money on the perimeter and protecting and, and we'll keep the bad guys out. Now we all realize you can't keep the bad guys out. It's how you respond to the bad guys. And it seems as though ServiceNow could potentially is, in some cases, solving that problem. How has the security conversation changed within your organization? Yeah, I mean, uh, security is high on the agenda with all the vulnerab vulnerabilities you hear in the, in the news and uh, also the day-to-day the -day cases. So security is a top agenda point. Uh, and we had also some uh, hard discussions within uh, Siemens because uh, the first reaction of Siemens was we have to have service now on premise. Yeah? <laughs> We have to have our own nice server uh, below uh, the table. And uh, then we had uh, some uh, good discussions with ServiceNow. We had uh, discussions with other customers where they said, no, no, we trust in the SaaS solution. Then we did some penetration tests. We did some assessment on site. And uh, that's where we said, OK, we will go with uh, the SaaS solution also for, for Siemens. And I'm pretty happy that uh, we made the decision because uh, now we don't have to focus on the operational topics. We can really focus on the content, bringing in new services, bringing in new uh, providers in rather discussing upgrading servers that you need to have the performance, etc. So uh, that is also a next step we have on the agenda to uh, um, bring in the vulnerability infosec topic also to our platform. And but and is that the responsibility of sort of one group, a group of gurus, or is it a shared responsibility across the business? Or what should it, it be? It, it is a shared uh, responsibility because uh, we are carefully watching how the service now uh, CMDB is growing because we are collecting a lot of data. Yeah? We see exactly what is going on the demand side, so what are the customers ordering, what in kind of incidents are they opening up. We see exactly how our IT is uh, doing and of course the provider data. We have all the CIs in our database and as we grow, we grow the data that is in our system. Yeah? And that is of course a huge value, but also security wise, also a balance you have to make. Yeah? All right, my last question, I'll give you the last word because we've got to wrap. Um, just knowledge, you know, your, your experience here, you know, things you've learned, anything that surprised you uh, <laughs> or delighted you, share your experience. No, I think, uh, uh, the knowledge is really a great opportunity to meet other customers, to see what they have on the agenda, what they're working against, and also it's a, a good opportunity to see what are the, the hot topics for ServiceNow, how does that match with our agenda that we have, with our pipeline. So we have a lot of discussions uh, in the knowledge and that is uh, a great value. Great, Matthias Egelhoff, thanks very much for coming to theCUBE, appreciate your time. Thank you. It's good to have you. All right, keep it right there, everybody. This is theCUBE, we're right back. We're live at Knowledge 16.